<laughs> oh man, that's the intro to the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure of announcing to you that we are going to make an effort to repeat the old rabbit One, two, I'm Ryan Hoover with Cimarron's Big Guns, and I'm here with Jamie and Bryce, who are going to learn everything about me. Aw, oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's start from the very beginning, maybe. Like, what inspired you to get into gunsmithing? Well, uh, when I was a kid, uh, there was a guy in our church, my dad was a preacher at the time, who kind of took me under his wing and taught me how to hunt and um, shot a squirrel in my backyard with a pellet gun. And he, Terrytown in Austin, ritzy neighborhood, and he came over and showed me how to gut it on the back porch and turn it into meal on the barbecue pit. And so that he got me into shooting and and whatnot. And so I, I just kind of started, you know, reading guns, guns and ammo, hunting magazines, and I really developed like the idea of combining the engineering behind it and the art involved in it. Right on. So if you want to be a gun uh, gunsmith, what's the first step? Um. Well, I always tell people, I started taking guns apart at 15 and started getting them back together at 18. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's actually, there are several ways to do it these days. There are some online courses, and it, it largely depends on what kind of learner you are. Like, if you're a visual learner and you can learn by a video, there are some great video courses you can take. Um, if you have to have someone mentor you and stand over you, um, then go to a school. But I think there are five or six different schools across the country in Oklahoma, Colorado, California, Arizona. North yeah, Arizona, and North Carolina. And those are just traditional, in the classroom, that's how you learn gunsmithing. Another great way, but it's more difficult because you have to find the right personality, is to get a mentor or an appre or apprentice for a gunsmith. Most gunsmiths, there, there are, when I started gunsmithing, I think it's grown since, but it hit the window down to there were only 1,700 general gunsmiths in the entire country. Wow. So people are like, why does it take you so long? Because there's no, there's not a lot of us, yeah. you know? So it's hard, it's always been difficult for me to take on a print, an apprentice because I'm so busy. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I love teaching. So I've done that periodically throughout my career as well. Right. I'd like to point out that Ryan is doing us a huge favor by doing this because he is incredibly busy all the time. And this is taking him out of the game. As you see, his assistant, Ryan Dose <laughs> is working really hard back there. All right, so maybe we're jumping ahead. How did you become involved with Cimarron? Uh, so I opened my company in 2007, and I was working out of my garage. I wasn't married yet, so that's that's why that worked. Um, but Mike, uh, the owner of Cimarron, saw my ad in the paper, and he talked to um, someone else who was working there. and said, call this guy and see what he's about. So I was actually um, waiting tables at a restaurant as a supplement to my business at the time. And he called me and said, hey, I want to come see your shop and talk to you about things. And um, he came. We he, he saw that I was capable. Then I went to Cimarron, met with Mike. I remember, <clears throat> uh, for those of you who don't know Mike, he can be a little rough around the edges. I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> Oh, he knows. <laughs> yeah, he, he, knows. Has, he owns it. So he uh, uh, he brought me to this guy. Brought me to Cimarron, and we went upstairs to meet Mike, who was working on his computer in his old office where you sit now. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, "Mike, Ryan's here. You want to talk to him, or do you want him to work on a gun first? And Mike's like, "Work on guns." <laughs> so I went downstairs, fixed a couple of guns for him, just you know. Uh, to show that I could, and then we went upstairs and talked about you know, what he wanted from us, the problems that he had had in the past with other services that he had used, and how we could help him solve that. And you know, Cimarron is not as large a part of our business as it was when we first started doing it, but I really do owe Cimarron a lot because that allowed me to go full-time into this and to really build to where we are today and what we do now. 
Yeah. It's been a symbiotic relationship. No, absolutely. We benefit it's, from knowing right. you. Yeah, and it's uh, grown into that more and more over the years. As Because, I mean, uh, August will be nine years that I've been doing Cimarron's work. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very symbiotic. I think we already decided we're getting you a mug. mug? Yeah. Yeah. You the the, the nine-year mug? mug? The nine-year mug. <laughs> the nine-year <laughs> mug. Right. So you had a space behind where Cimarron is for a while? Right. So I got married and was working out of my garage, and it takes a specific type of person to work out of the garage, which I'm not. <laughs> uh, take out of the equation the Texas weather, you know, when you're no air conditioning in a garage, it's 100 degrees outside, it's like basically an oven with the door open. Yep. Um, so in 2000 and the end of 2010, Mike approached me through uh, one of the vice presidents about retrofitting the old horse barn that was behind the mm -hmm. house that he used to live in. And so um, he had his guys insulated, had a bathroom. It's, uh, I think it's 475 square feet or 500 square feet, something like that. It's not big, but it was a step up from the garage. There's a little more space in the garage, but it had an air conditioner. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so what's, what's like the hardest gun you've ever had to work on? What's a big challenge for you? Well, um, it's several different challenges I can think of over the years that have been, uh, a lot of it's just because I'm learning. You know, I have, the, I have the philosophy of gunsmithing is a skill set. I mean, it's truly a set of skills that are so varied. But once you have the foundation of them, it applies to almost every type of gun. So that's why I say learning, not like, oh, I'm going to figure out how to do this and practice on somebody else's gun. But applying the skills and tweaking them to that specific project has been difficult. So the one that comes up to my mind is this guy brought me a rifle that he had had um, another company put the barrel on and flute it and make a, the, action, the barreled action was really accurate. And he brought me a stock blank. And he had paid $1,000 for the blank. It was a beautiful wood. And... But the duplicator who did it, like, so it comes to me like a, uh, like a blank, like, uh, it kind of looks like wood or it kind of looks like a stock, but it's not finished. Mm -hmm. So the duplicator who did that really messed up. It was crooked and it was, it took me over a hundred hours, man, me personally fixing this stock. It turned out beautiful. Uh, I can, I'll show you, it's actually the background on my, my computer. Uh, but man, that was, that was, that was frustrating. Absolutely. Uh, I can figure like some assemblies are different. Learning how to do certain assemblies is difficult, but that was the one that definitely was the most challenging. But it teaches you patience. Oh, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> What's the most common problem you see come through here? Maybe something that is a user error or easily fixable that you couldn't tell our audiences about? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we... So first, we always, like if somebody doesn't know how their gun works, we always teach them that for free. So if they have a gun, and how to field strip it. So if they buy a gun and they need to know how, um, like a good example is getting the, the base pin out of a three and a half inch Cimarron revolver. You know, you gotta push the bit and do that and hold it. And a lot of times they'll say, well, I can't get this darn thing out. And so I, you know, explain it to them. Um, so they're really, we don't like work on a lot of those common problems. We try to solve them so that people, you know, can just know how their guns work. Mm -hmm. But I would say there are a lot of um, hmm, common problems would be like, we get a lot of uh, like locally scopes that are m mounted incorrectly. Um, we are really good at finding details. So if somebody else has worked on something, we'll notice like the teeniest detail they miss that's mm -hmm. just the next nth to make it work right. Um, so we do a lot of, uh, like, yeah, they did a great job at this, or the owner tried to do something like, you did a good job at this, but try this too. And, you know, I'm all for them doing it themselves, but uh, that's, you know, I've been doing this a long time, so it's kind of, I can notice those little right. things. Right. Yeah. yeah, they're they're going through their learning, and you can right. help them kind of close the gap. Exactly. And I, I would say that the most common thing is managing people's expectations about guns, about what they what they are supposed to do. Sure. And so that's like that's where we are now. Is that we're more teachers. Like that's my that's my thing. So you know, um, I always say you know guns can be confusing and intimidating. So we build guns and we fix guns and we teach about guns 
under the philosophy that there is no such thing as a stupid question so that everyone we encounter gains confidence with firearms. So if someone comes in here and they're like, this gun is, sh is shooting an inch and a half group, but I see all those tiny groups on the wall from custom rifles you built, I say, well, you know, what are you doing with it? You know, you're, are you shooting a deer at 75 yards at a hill country deer stand? Well, then you have a target that's this big, so your inch and a half group is, is fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And you don't need to spend all these hundreds of dollars to get that down. Or, you know, fixed sided revolvers are a big one too. Mm -hmm. You know, they're never designed to, to shoot a fly off a fence post at a hundred yards. You know, it's been done. There are people that have been doing it, but there are a lot better, but they were a lot better shots using a lot more high end custom built revolvers specific for that purpose than the normal everyday gun. Yeah. And, you know, especially a, that kind of gun is a close range weapon anyway. And yeah. so managing expectations about that, that's been one that we've been dealing with a lot lately is managing expectations about fixed sighted guns and how accurate they should be, mm -hmm. point of aim and all that stuff. Um, speaking of teaching, I know that you do some like community classes mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah, so that's, like I said, that's where we're going now is that we, um, I love teaching. I was a trainer in the Navy. That's one of the, I was a gunner's mate, but I was a tactical instructor and basically taught everybody on my ship how to use guns. Um, I taught them how to shoot, and I took them through the course of fire, and um, that's where I'm going now. I love teaching. I love, love, love teaching because what I want to do is take, like, the first class I offer is called SAFE Moms, and SAFE stands for Super Awesome Firearms Expert. <laughs> and so the, that, the reason behind that class is I knew a lot of ladies who, through my wife, we have two small kids, play dates, you know. So sometimes a woman will go over to another woman's house for their kids to play. Someone's a gun guy, someone's not a gun guy or gun gal, whatever. So we were teaching them how guns work, how to make any gun safe, and how to talk to your kids about guns. And it really is, boils down to the fact that we sell confidence, mm -hmm. you know, over everything. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I want you to be confident that your gun's going to work if I've worked on it. I want you to be confident that you're going to be able to use it at a competition or a hunt. I want you to be confident that you will be able to keep yourself and your loved ones safe around guns. <clears throat> I want you to gain the physical confidence that knowing how to use a gun can bring. You know, uh, it can equal the tape. I mean, I probably have, I'm a lot bigger than you, but if you have a gun, it equals mm -hmm. or equal, mm -hmm. you know. So I just love, like, no, we normalize guns. Our mission is to normalize guns, to say these are everyday objects that you don't have to be scared of. You take a lot more complicated things like your car for granted and don't hesitate to get in there and drive it yep. when a car is a lot more difficult to learn to operate well than a gun is. Mm -hmm. And you can, I mean, there's so many cool opportunities with guns as far as, like I said, the confidence, the camaraderie. I mean, you guys know well going to like... <clears throat> Any of the big cowboy action matches, you know, how much camaraderie is there of people having fun, getting to know each other, meeting new people, yep. plus challenging themselves with the competition aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So that's really the, the prism through which we focus all of our work now because there are people who do what we do. Like I always tell people when they ask me about a custom rifle, the accuracy mountain has been climbed. We <laughs> figured out how to make an accurate rifle. But what we're good at is teaching you about what we're doing, why you should choose this over that. Why you don't need to spend five thousand dollars on that, and instead spend fifteen hundred dollars on this? You know, what are you? We don't come from it from the perspective of what can we make you. We come from it from the perspective of okay, what are you trying to accomplish? And that comes with anything we do in the shop, plus the Cimarron guns. You know, because mm -hmm. it's um, sometimes it's a matter of uh, you know the old joke about Doc. It hurts when I do this. Don't, don't, do don't do that. Right? <laughs> you know, because a lot of it's like, well, it, it won't do it when I do this. Well, why do you need to do that? Oh, I guess I don't need to do that. Right, so that's cool. Yeah. Okay, you're ready to go. Yeah. Very good, mm -hmm. very good. All right, so uh, if anyone wants to get a hold of Ryan at RH Custom Guns, how would they go about doing that? There are several, ra several ways. Um, I like Facebook, you know, so RH Custom Guns forward slash Facebook. We also have an Instagram page. All of our contact information, we're on those regularly. And we have our own YouTube channel, too. So RH Custom Guns YouTube as well. So Fantastic. Absolutely.